The wonderful thing is that when the moon is entirely in the shadow, when it was in the darkest part of the shadow, the moon will actually look to your eyes to be kind of rose colored or orange colored. And, uh, and that's actually because your eyes are adjusting to that darker light. And in fact, the only light getting up to the moon at this point is light that is scattering through the Earth's atmosphere. So most people know, of course, that the moon is made of rock, actually very dark rock. So when you see it shining in the night sky, it's reflecting sunlight. So in this case, the Earth is getting in the way of that sunlight. And the only light hitting the surface of the moon and getting back to us, bouncing back to us, is light that's actually filtering through the atmosphere of the Earth. And it's really the same effect as to why a sunset or a sunrise looks red. The thing I find most significant about the moon is that its surface is largely unchanged for billions of years, since practically the beginning of the solar system. And on Earth, of course, we don't have that opportunity. The Earth has an atmosphere, it has oceans, it has wind, it has erosion. But we have this planetary companion that's been with us, the whole history of the Earth. And it is modified almost none at all. I mean, obviously, the moon has been hit by craters, by asteroids and comets. But other than that, it's almost this pristine body, billions of years old. And so as a scientist, there are things up there that are going to tell us about the history of the Earth, what the Earth's environment in space has been like, about what has hit the Earth in the past, which things also hit the moon as well. We, you know, we have, we have a, quite a ways to go yet to make sure that it's going to be safe. You know, we want to obviously make sure we have the most successful mission possible. So we're beginning by sending a lot of robotic spacecraft. And some of the things that I'm most looking forward to, uh, for one, there's actually, the, uh, the, there's actually this NASA rover called Viper that will be going up there and looking for uh, the kinds of resources that astronauts may need for a sustained presence on the moon. People, when they go to Mars, will have to be completely independent. They will have to be able to repair their spacecraft, deal with any type of medical emergencies. Uh, even communications will be more complicated with people on Mars. The moon is this planetary body that we can stand on and test things and, and, you know, and, and actually expose our technology to you know, this rugged environment of space. And it's right here. It's always going along with the Earth. It's only just a couple of days journey back and forth to the moon. And so, I mean, to me, it seems an obvious proving ground to go farther out into the solar system. You know, I I'm wondering what's gonna happen the next time we stand on the moon and what that will lead to. I know people are talking a lot about advances in things like water purification, how that can be used around the planet to save people you know, all the time. Uh, you know, what, what's that going to do to our communication? What's that going to do to, again, to computers and to artificial intelligence? A lot of these uh, rovers and these CLIPS missions that we're sending are going to be making extensive use of, of artificial intelligence for the first time on the moon. So, you know, but I, I, I mean, that's a good answer. That's kind of you know, the things that I find most important about Apollo. But I have to say, you know, I've never experienced a night looking up and saying humanity is on the moon. And, and that is giving me goosebumps. That's what I'm looking forward to.